In spite of all the changes on Montserrat since the eruption began, people say that Montserrat is still home, still nice. What is it that makes Montserrat like this? Peace of mind, the freedom. I mean, you can get up, go anywhere, anytime. I mean, you know, in water. It's more or less the freedom you have being being on Earth. And everybody's like family, it's when family you could be sheep. Like majority of the people in the area are family. So it's not hard to get by. Did small little things in terms of um, just saying hi to somebody who you may not have any idea who they are. You know, you pass them, you greet them on the street, etc. From the time I came there, it was a very, very nice place. Most of the people are very friendly. And it's a very quiet place. So still home, still nice. If you imagine everything that sustained Montserrat was in Plymouth and suddenly it's not there anymore. The first time surprised me really, really, really bad in July. Yeah, it was a big one, so I was like kind of scared, you know, I haven't seen that for my first time. So yeah, I just spent one week there and I went back home. You know, it sounded like people, something, people shooting at my house. So I called the MBO and I asked him, I said, I, I, you know, I told him where I was and I said, I am in Isles Bay, um, what's going on? And he goes, you're in Isles Bay? What's happening there? And I was like, oh my God, you don't know. <laughs> you know, so it's like that freaked me out. But well, we <laughs> would sit right here where you're sitting and look at the volcano and, oh, there's a, a two-wire because we'd measure them by the power lines, they'd go up to the, <laughs> oh, that's a three-wire, oh, there's a four-wire, wow, you know, <laughs> it's really tall. Most of the, 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 the problems was the ash. It wasn't the, the volcano, it was the ash. You come home, you go in your, you go in your bed, and you, your, your bed is covered with fine ash. You clean it off, and ten minutes later, and you think about, what am I breathing, you know? And the ash was there constantly. I think, I think it, 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 if this was to continue, I think everybody would do it was like gritty on your face, in your teeth, you know, and everything done. In Montserrat, all the grass was covered, first time, everything. That time was over it. I had to, I had this go once when and it started, right? And ash was all over the grass. And I came out one morning, didn't know what to tie, we had to tie it, took it in the grass, and nothing, I just tied it down because nothing tends to do. The go was like saying, all right. It was like bawling, like asking me, what happened? What happened? <laughs> Actually, he couldn't understand anything because you know he, they'd never seen that before. Even the goats would say, "What? What?" We just bawling. After the ash, we had some guys come over here, and uh, you know, okay, you need help cleaning up. Let's go. I watched one guy do my pool. I mean, nothing flat. It, there wasn't that much in the pool, but still, it took him like a day clean that out. There, we had four or five guys over here that cleaned up the rest, you know, the stairs and all around, and they had it cleaned up in three days. And I was like, wow, okay, maybe it's not so bad. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's just the fact that how it just got done, you know, because I'm looking at it thinking, oh my God, this it's going to take us forever to clean this up. Uh, a knitted community. Everybody looks out for everybody. Every everybody would go and help do some on the roof or on anything. Like when we were building houses after the volcano, while the volcano was going, people, my friends, would come and build blocks, cast concrete, do stuff. Easy like that. Very put together, and I see you know. After I went back for the week, it take three weeks. I should, over two to three weeks. Yeah, I would say to make the place clear up. I didn't thought it was gonna take that quick. Most of the roads, and when I came back up, I saw that I was looking better than how I left it, you know. And it's not, like, and from that, when it erupted the second time after that, like everybody just get together and start to clean up, and I mean, foreigners, monstrations, everybody come together. Um, so, the, the, because of a small community, as you said, when the volcano erupted, people pulled together, people pulled together after the flood, after Hugo. I mean, it. it we survived. Hugo, Hugo, to me, was more devastating than, than the volcano in terms of an immediate impact. The volcano had a period of time when you moved and so on, so that's long term. But overnight, no house, no roof, no food, no electricity, right? 
So, you know, everybody came together. Even during this storm, people came together. So, yes. Yeah. We've been here through several eruptions where get out the shovel, get out the broom, get out the power washer, clean it up. I mean, it's uh, we come from Nebraska where we're used to waking up in the morning and two foot of snow, get out the snow blower, get out the shovel, get out the broom, you know, clean it up. <laughs> so it's not much different. Only this doesn't melt. <laughs> <laughs> is left behind in St. Patrick's that's next to nothing. You got a life. Once you've got life, you got it all. You could start over again. Start again. Crawl. So if you're gone, you can't do nothing. Do nothing. Right. Money start. ain't nothing. Oh, you could start over again and get more than what you yeah. ever have before. You check? And then eventually, when they opened up the wardrobe bay again, the nest had collapsed. The roof had fallen in from weight of ash and then Hurricane George came and that finished it off. And so Carol said, well, the dive shop's there. If you want to do something with the dive shop, which was a little, very West Indian little place with a veranda around two sides. And it looked over the tennis court. So we said, okay, we'll do that. And we converted the dive shop into a little bar restaurant. And then we just carried on and, and you know, every time they closed Old Road Bear, we'd just say, okay, well, we took the business home and we served lunch and dinners on our deck by the house. And just backwards and forwards all the time. You know, I used to go out, but you'd have to go right in the houses. Where they had, like, somebody's there, they would be there. I'd go right there and they'd come out and buy it. It was better than now. And it's, yeah, business was a lot better. But maybe they start coming back. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, well, when I was building a house, the lawyer came to me and said to me, he said, Thomas, you're going to build a house here with that thing in front of you? So I said, Mr. Kelsey, let me tell you something. You don't watch a volcano, you watch yourself. You know, you don't wait on volcano. If I build it in a volcano, you take it, I move on again. Um, well, I think I moved about 10 times. I used to live in Richmond Hill. They, they actually started up, we moved, well, we moved to St. John's a few times, then eventually right now I'm living in Lookout. Uh, moved in 99 and we're in one of the housing schemes, but obviously that's Lookout. Um, affected, well, I'm sure as everybody would really say that everybody's been disrupted, both socially and even in their, you know, lives like school and so forth. We were in containers in the old school, um, generally things like that. You know something? I said this to some people, God bless the volcano. I would never have had this, I would never have had my house already. And it's to God. And it's to God. So it's, it's good and it's bad. It's bad for some people. The people who have lost their houses and stuff on the other side, it's like bad for them. But it's good for me. The wind is never blowing bad. It's always good for somebody. No matter which way it goes. If it's bad for John, it's good for you. Uh, some of us who had it very... Uh, difficult in the early stages. Um, for instance, I lived um, in my pickup for two weeks. Yeah, at, at the height of the volcano, because I had no place to go. All right? But I was not leaving Manchot. Yeah. Um, if Manchot was going to go down, I'll go down with it. We've been lucky, very lucky, as one door closed, another one opened, you know. For example, a lot of the funding that comes from overseas, we now have the opportunity, for example, myself, I was actually fortunate enough to have been given a full scholarship to go and study for a bachelor's. I believe, honestly, as, you know, morbid as it sounds, if the volcano hadn't really acted up, we wouldn't have been given that opportunity. And to be frank, I probably would not have been able to afford to go away to study. So, I mean, a lot of people are benefiting that way. If the volcano wouldn't have gone off, I think Montserrat would have been another tourist. The cruise ships were starting to come in, Montserrat was starting to flourish. And a lot of that advancement isn't at all it's cracked up, but you lose a lot of the allure of the island if it gets too commercialized. I, I still feel that the volcano hasn't hurt Montserrat as much as it could have done because what happened in other islands now is crime and drugs and guns. Even 
friends in Nevis are leaving because it's become so unsafe there. In a small island like this, there's always a problem. And people just have grown up dealing with whatever problems, whether it's hurricanes or droughts or, you know, there's always some problem going on and you just deal with it. Um, so I've heard the term that they are, are resilient people. So, um, uh, sometimes I question the term, but maybe those who are looking at us from the outside would see us as being resilient. People have seen us as being resilient because it's, this thing has gone on for 15 years. Most volcanoes, as we've accustomed, are expected to have been two, three years and over. Maybe one episode and it's gone. Um, but if, if you look at it, people living in Montserrat, living in the north, uh, we don't even see the volcano. Once in a while you see a plume of smoke, you get a smell of the sulfur. Um, there's nothing to, to, to frighten you. People outside of Montserrat, seeing the, 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 the small size of the island and seeing these massive eruptions, think, I mean, you must be crazy. You must be crazy to live in a place like that. I, I mean, you see, unless you come to Manshat, you don't appreciate that life goes on in spite of the volcano. You know, I get up every day. I forget this there. Believe me, I would get up and instead of looking at the mountain, I go and straight into my plantation to do some work, you know like weeding grass or cutting grass. I'm supposed to look there first. <laughs> what I just look, I forget, I forget this there. <laughs> no, it's the same as, you know, forget this there. So this is the things that make you feel happy, you know, you don't have to worry about anything until when it comes. <laughs> oh my God. Um, we did not leave. We didn't, um, the, even though that a carrot was offered us, we did not leave and go. So in that respect, we are in fact resilient. Um, it, um, it's not easy to live with an active volcano. It's mother nature. And you never know what it's going to do. So you see again, we, we, we here figure, well, what's going to happen? I mean, you don't know what's going to happen next. We don't think it's anything bad, so you continue to live happily. What are you waiting on, you know, wait on, you know, wait on disaster. You, you work with it.